So my dear children, we discussed several theoretical parts related to our force lesson. Now it's time to discuss several questions. Now first of all, we'll be uh, answering several questions which is given in your textbook, right? So first of all, now let's answer the questions given in your textbook. So as usual, you can observe the first exercise is given, select the correct or more suitable answer. So there are several MCQ type questions given here. So you have to select the correct answer from each of these given MCQ questions. The weight of an object is a force. What is the unit of measuring weight? So it's given that the weight is a force. You know that I have explained when, uh, when I was discussing about the thing called weight and even we measured the weight of a certain object by using the Newton spring balance, right? You could remember that I told you, if you take a certain object, that object is getting pulled towards the earth due to gravitational force of our earth. Not in earth, if you place an object in any kind of a planet, according to the gravitational uh, force of that planet, that object is pulled towards the surface. Actually, it's not towards the surface, towards the core of the planet, right? So the boundary that we can reach or the final limit that we can reach is the surface. So ultimately we are going to stand on the surface or we are going to stop on the surface. Okay. So that's how this gravity thing works. So actually that gravity thing, right? Gravity is the main responsible thing for the creation of a weight of an object. So if you move on to space, there won't be any weight acting downwards as there are no gravity within the space. That's why you know that astronaut can freely move here and there without any trouble. It's like they are flying. It's because there are no any force called weight which pulling them towards a certain surface. So the factor called weight is actually a force. Here especially, this force is always acting towards a surface. Surface means actually towards a planet, a celestial object. Okay. So it's occurring or it's happening because of the gravitational force of the planet or the celestial object. The main reason for the creation of a quantity called weight is the gravitational force. So that's why this weight thing is also referred as the gravitational pull acting on a certain object. The gravitational pull acting on a certain object. So my dear children, as the name goes by gravitational pull, pull, you know that pull is a force. So if it is a force, then it should be measured from Newton's right? It should be measured from Newtons. So my dear children, the answer would be Newtons, right? Weight of an object is a force. The unit of measure in weight is Newtons. Force is considered as a vector quantity because it has, so force is type of a vector quantity. Vector quantity means we can measure the amount of force by using a certain value by using a certain amount like 10, 5, 15, 20, 3 and so on. By using a certain value we can measure it. There is a special unit called Newtons to measure the force. And the speciality is that if you take a force there is a certain acting direction. Push away from an object. Pull towards the object. Object means whatever the thing which is going to apply the force. Okay, let's say that I am the one who is applying the force, then push is always acting away from me. If I am the person who is applying the force, then the pulls are working towards me. So always 
if I need to push an object, I should move an object away from me when I'm pulling, when I'm pushing, right? Not pulling, when I'm pushing an object, always I need to move an object away from me. If I'm going to pull an object, always that object coming towards me, right? I can't apply a push, right? I can't apply a push so that the object would come towards me. It's because push always has a direction. Pull is also the same. They have a certain direction. So pull is always towards me. Pushers are always away from me. So my dear children, special reinforcers is that always these forces carry a certain direction. They have a definite direction, right? There are some other quantities which do you know which they do not have any kind of a you know like direction. Now, if you take time, time is always going to go, go always going to pass by. I mean, like we can't go backwards in time. There are no certain backward thing in time. Now, but in force. If I'm going to stand like this, if I'm going to apply a push, then it is forward. If I'm going to apply a pull, then it is backward, right? If I'm going to apply a push, then it is forward. If I'm going to apply a pull, then it is backward. Backward means towards me and push away from me. So there is a certain direction when you apply forces. So that's why these things are called as vector quantities. So forces have a definite direction plus they have a certain magnitude which can be measured from Newtons. So let's go for the answers then. Force is considered as a vector quantity because it has a magnitude. So that is correct. Number three, direction. That is also correct. A point of application. That is also correct. Magnitude and a direction. But however, These things are called as vector quantities because they have a magnitude plus a direction. There is a point of application as well. But however, that thing is irrelevant for the vector quantity thing. Vector quantities are the quantities that has a definite directions plus with the magnitude. Okay. Question number three. A force can be graphically represented by a straight line. Consider the following statements in this regard. The magnitude of force is denoted by the length of the straight line. Magnitude of force is denoted by the length of straight line. That is absolutely correct, my dear children. During the graphical representation of a force, we use the length of the straight line to represent. Right? We use the length of the straight line to represent the amount or the magnitude of the force. That's correct. In the second question, the direction of force is denoted by the arrowhead on the line. Direction of force is denoted by the arrowhead on the line. Yes, that is also correct. Now, if you take phi Newton of a force like this, right? The arrowhead is going to show the direction of, act, uh, the, direction of the force. So, it's correct. This is also correct. Number three, the point of application of the force is indicated by the midpoint of the straight line. Point of application of the force is indicated by the midpoint of the straight line. Now, this is incorrect. We can't use the midpoint of the straight line to show the point of application, right? We use the other end like this end in order to show the point of application, right? So point of application is, point of, point of application is shown by the other end of the straight line, not from the midpoint. So it is incorrect. So the correct answers are, correct answers are A and B. So the true statements are A and B only. A and B only. Question number four. 
figures given below show how a Newton spring balance is used to measure the magnitude of a force applied on an object. Which figure above shows the correct way of using the spring balance? Now my dear children, when you are applying forces by using spring balance or else if you are going to measure the forces by using the Newton spring balance, always the direction of the force which you are going to apply and the direction of the spring balance should align to a same direction. Otherwise, we can't measure it properly. So, when you are going for the answer, check the one which are always aligning with the same direction. Now, let's go for the answers. See, in this one, you can clearly see that in this one, this is the direction of the string, but this is the direction of the spring balance. So, there is a clear change in the two directions. See, so this is incorrect. There is a clear change between the two directions. It is not aligned into a same direction, right? Check the second one. This is the direction and this is the other direction. So, there are once again two different directions. So, it is also incorrect. Number three, third one is also the, th is also the same. This is the direction of the spring balance and this is the direction of the fo uh, force which is applied or the direction of moving. So, that is also incorrect. But if you check the fourth one, it's a line in a straight line. Both the forces applied by the spring balance and the motion are the same. So, the correct one which can be used to measure the force in here is the fourth one which is D. D is the answer. So, really simple questions my dear children, right? These four questions were really simple, obvious answers would come for these things right. So, when you are always remember when you are using a spring balance always keep the spring balance and the object in a same vertical or horizontal line or else you can align it is not going to be a problem but however the thing or the string or the thread or whatever the thing which used to apply the force should align with the spring balance which you are using like this. Aligning means it should on a straight line. Right, so this let us go for the next question. Then. Consider the statements given below about a force. Because of a force applied on an object, because of a force applied on an object, okay, object at rest can be moved. Absolutely correct. Object at rest can be moved. Correct. We can move a certain object by applying a force. Right? We can move a certain object by applying a force. That is correct. Next one. Object in motion can be stopped. Object in motion can be stopped. Yes. You know that we are driving a vehicle. We apply brakes. By applying brakes, we are applying a pull. Right? We are applying a pull. We are pulling the wheel backwards. We are pulling the wheel backwards, actually not we, but the brake pad is going to pull the wheel backwards by applying a certain force. That's why the motion of the wheel is going to stop, right? That's why the motion of the wheel is going to stop. That's how we can, we can op, uh, op stop a vehicle. So, we need to apply forces in order to stop a moving object. So, it is obvious that object in motion can be stopped by applying forces. So, it is correct. Number three, the direction of motion can be changed. Direction of motion can be obviously changed. You know that we discussed when we are big, in the beginning of our lesson. If you kick a football towards another player which is coming towards you, right? The ball is going to a different direction, right? 
in playing cricket the bowler is going to send the ball towards the batsman batsman is giving a push to that ball to turn that ball to a different direction so by applying a force of course we can change the direction of a moving object so it's also correct the direction of motion can be changed so the true statements are all a b and c all of these things are correct all of these things are correct right then so my dear children these are the answers for the questions given in your textbook okay now as usual right so let's go for the extra questions first of all i have prepared several mcq type questions so lot so let's go with the mcq type questions first then after that several essay types essay type questions are for you right so you have to choose the most accurate answer in here number 1 force is called as a push pull push or a pull none of the above so it's obvious that you know that right you know that you take a force force is always a push or it can be a pull so push or a pull is simply called as a force right so the correct answer for the first one is push or a pull push or a pull next one mass is a number of particles contained in matter b also called as the weight of an object c push or a pull d a force right mass you know that each and every matter is made up with particles these particles are named as atoms small particles each and every matter is made up with small particles which are referred as atoms right atoms and the other thing is that my dear children if you take these particles these particles are very tiny and small right we discuss these things right we discuss these things under the third lesson each and everything is made up with atoms atoms are very tiny particles so mass of a certain object means the number of particles contained within a certain object or in matter in simple so it is not a force and i have given you what do you mean by the or for the definition of weight right definition of weight weight is also a type of a force right so my dear children remember mass is not going to reflect about any kind of a push or a pull in simple a force or else a weight you know that weight is a force it's reflected about a number what number the number of particles contained within the matter the number of particles contained within the object that's what do you mean by the mass always remember it's reflect it's reflecting about a count not a force weight is a different concept actually weight thing is getting created because of the mass all the particles are attracted towards the earth the attraction or that pull which the given which is given by the earth is referred as the weight the gravitational pull in simple however mass and weight are two different concepts weight is a force but however mass is not it's reflecting about a count that count is the number of particles contained within the matter so my dear children answer for this question is mass is the number of particles contained in matter number of particles contained in matter or number of particles contained in an object next one correct statement about the weight 
occur due to gravitational force of the earth. It's correct, right? Weight is a factor that occurs because of the gravitational force, right? That is correct. It is a vector quantity. Absolutely, you know that weight is a, right? Weight is a vector quantity because it is a force. The direction of weight is always towards the ground. Weight is act acting always towards the ground. So, it's correct. It is a force. Of course, it is a force, right? Of course, it is a force. It's the gravitational pull given out by the surface of the earth. Not the surface, actually to acting towards the core, but however, object is going to at the surface, uh, going to stop at the surface, right? So, this is a force. So, it's also correct. So, the correct statements are all. All of these things are correct. Number four, the difference between mass and weight, a difference, they are asking about a difference between mass and weight. So, remember always mass reflects about a count, count means the number of particles in here. Weight is always a vector quantity which has a magnitude plus a direction and also it is a force, okay, it is a force. Mass is, it's just reflecting about a count, no? So, we can't get a count by using a certain direction. If you ask, if you, if, if I'm going to ask a question like this, how many number of children are there in a certain classroom? You, you would say like 30. So, does it reflect a certain direction? Of course not. We can't mention a direction for that count, right? So, mass is like that. In mass, there are certain number of particles in it, okay? So, we can't give out a direction for the particles. For the number of particles, we can't give out a direction, right? 100 particles, how can you say a direction for that thing? We can't say a direction for number of particles. So, that's a good difference between mass and the weight. That's why the weight is becoming a vector quantity or else it's a force. The weight is showing always a direction. So, that direction is always towards the ground or towards the surface of a planet. Okay. So, let us go for the answers and we will see. Weight has a magnitude but mass does not. That is correct, right? Sorry. It is saying about the magnitude. See, it is saying about the magnitude. Weight has a magnitude but mass does not has does not have a magnitude. Incorrect. Each and every quantity has a magnitude. We can measure each and every quantity, right? Weight, we can measure it by, by using a certain value. 5, 10, 15, 20, 3, 2. Like that way, we can measure it by using a value. So, it is correct. Mass, mass also we can. 3 kilogram, 5 kilogram, right? 20 kilogram, 100 kilogram, both of these things has a magnitude. Correct. Right? So, weight has a magnitude, but mass does not. So, it is incorrect. Weight has a unit to measure, but mass does not. That is also incorrect. You know that weight can be measured from kilograms, grams milligrams like that way there are certain units to measure mass so it's incorrect weight has a direction but mass does not ah uh, now that's my answer weight is a vector quantity therefore weight has a direction but mass is not so this should be the direction this should be the answer this is the difference a main difference between weight and the mass Right, weight and the mass, the main difference is this. Next one, weight is a scalar quantity, incorrect my dear children, because it is not a scalar quantity, it is a vector quantity, so this is obviously incorrect. So, our correct answer would be question number 3. For the uh, answer, question number 4 is answer 3 or C, right, C is our answer. 
right fourth question c is our answer what is the answer once again weight has a direction but mass does not right my dear children now let's move on with the next question then question number five an example for a vector quantity example for a vector quantity vector quantity means it should it should have a magnitude plus it should have a direction so you should have uh, you should select a quantity that has a direction with a magnitude so the first one is given mass no i have explained about the mass in the earlier question so it's incorrect pressure pressure is also a quantity which showing only a certain magnitude that's it pressure is created due to application of a force but however pressure is a certain scalar quantity that has only a magnitude only we'll be discussing about the pressure thing in our next lesson however up to now just remember it's the uh, like it's the tension created on a certain surface due to the application of force right it's a tension created on a certain surface due to application of a force so that tension is running all around the surface so there is no certain direction in it okay there is no certain direction in it so my dear children press pressure is also not a vector quantity force yes that's our obvious answer you know that force is a vector quantity right repeatedly repeatedly I, show, uh, I have proven you and i showed you that force is a vector quantity so that's our answer an example for a scalar quantity example for a scalar quantity scalar quantity means opposite of vector those are the quantities which has only a magnitude which has only a certain value that's it right it has only a value that's it so you have to select an example for a scalar quantity weight it's incorrect because weight is a force force is a vector quantity force of course incorrect once again a vector quantity push 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 or a pull is a force so therefore push is also a vector quantity length that is our answer my dear children we can't show a direction for a length right we can't show a direction for a length five centimeters how can you show a direction there's no direction in a length so length is our answer push is always acting towards an object so push this is push right if an object is like this this is the push right this is a push push so acting towards an object acting away from an object acting away from an object acting away or towards to an object none of the above so if so if this thing is the object if this is the push so it's obvious to us that it's always acting towards the object pushers are always acting towards the object if you are going to apply a push from the other side from the other side you are going to apply a push once again see once again it's acting towards the object towards the object but away from the one who is going to apply okay so our answer would be push is always acting towards an object yes a is the answer acting towards an object right acting towards an object next one unit or units used to measure the force 
force unit used to measure the force unit or units okay kilograms we can't measure a force from kilograms incorrect grams that is also incorrect kilograms and grams we use these things to measure the uh, measure the mass not the weight right so force can be measured from or weight can be measured from newtons force is always measured from newtons right force is always measured from newtons my dear children kilograms and grams we use those things to measure the mass of a certain object okay mass right then select the set of answers that has only vector quantities so you have to select the answers that has only vector only vector quantities let's go for the answers weight correct mass incorrect weight correct force correct distance incorrect distance means like in the earlier case it's reflecting a certain length so length is not going to show any kind of a direction how can you represent a direction in length there is no certain direction in length no distance means a length distance between two cities means length between the two cities so obviously it should be a scalar quantity as it as it never reflects a direction third one weight correct force once again correct pull pull or a push is a force right so this is also correct so the set of answers which has only vector quantities are weight force and pull so our correct answer would be number 3 number 3 is our answer these are the ones which carry vector quantities next one instrument used to measure force the instrument used to measure force right the instrument that we use to measure force is spring balance correct spring balance can be used to measure there are some spring balancers which calibrated from newtons so it's correct not a problem it's correct next one newton balance spring balance is also called as the newton balance so that is also correct newton spring balance that is also correct right that's the thing which is given in your textbook also the newton spring balance as it is calibrated from newtons so this is also correct so all the above can be used all the above can be used in measuring in measuring these forces right all of these things can be used to measure forces right then next question international standard unit to measure mass to measure mass what is the international standard unit that we use so to measure mass the international standard unit that we use is kilograms not grams my dear children it's kilograms kilograms so kilogram is the answer international standard unit to measure weight so weight is a force forces are measured from newtons newtons question number 13 force always has only a magnitude incorrect it has a magnitude as well as a direction so only a direction thing that is also incorrect both magnitude and direction that's correct a value only value means that's also about the magnitude right so that is also incorrect force always has a magnitude and a direction both can be observed for a 
force as it is a vector quantity. Question number 14. During graphical representation of force, dot is used to show dot. A dot is used to show the point of application, my dear children. Length of the arrowhead, magnitude, direction of the arrowhead is the direction, dot is the point of application. So, during graphical representation of force, dot is used to show the point of application of the force, point of application, not the direction, not the magnitude, but the point of application of the force. Question number 15, length of the arrow of a force is used to show, now length of the arrow, length of the arrow, we use the length in order to show the magnitude or the value of the force. So let's go for the answer that has magnitude, yes, in here you can see. So magnitude of the force can be represented by using the length of the arrow or the straight line. To make work easy, we can change. Now you know that to make our work quite easy, we can change the direction and point of application of the force. So let's go for the answers. Let's see whether these things are there or not. Direction of the force. Ah, yes, correct. Point of application of the force. Yes, ah, they are. Magnitude of the force. Is it correct, my dear children? To make work easy, can we change the magnitude? Let's imagine like this. There is a certain table. You need to push that table to a different location. But however, now you are pushing it, you can't push. Why is that? Because you are not applying certain amount of a force which is enough to push that table to a different location. You don't have, you are not applying enough force to push that thing. Right? That's why it's not moving. So, we are doing the work in much difficulty. However, we can't do it. But by changing the magnitude, you are going to get some help from another friend of yours or else from a family member. Now, you can easily push that table to a different location. How come? Because you have changed the magnitude over there. You have obviously changed the magnitude by applying two different force by, by applying two different forces. You got the help from the partner. So you changed the magnitude. A pawn changed the magnitude. The, the work got much easier. The work got much easier. Right? I'll give you another example like this. Let's say that you are pushing a certain table or else a certain vehicle in much difficulty. It's heavier. You can feel that it's very heavy. It's very difficult. Right? So, I'm going to get some help from a different person. Even though that thing is moving, it's difficult for you. Now, you are going to get help from a certain person. Now, the both, both the people are going to move that certain vehicle. In that case, without that difficulty, you can move it to a certain location. So the work is quite getting quite more easier if you can change the magnitude, right? If you can increase the magnitude at a place where you are going to work in much difficulty, that difficulty can be reduced up to a certain level. So, my dear children, of course you can change the magnitude in a force as well in order to make our work easy. So, this is also correct. So, all of these things can be changed to make work easy. Right? By applying a force, we can change the direction of motion of an object. Of course, it is, correct. it is correct 
you know that we can change the direction i have given you obvious answers obvious uh, examples that can be that can be observed in our daily life regarding with this thing change in the direction reduce the speed of moving object correct i told you that by applying brakes we reduce the speed of a moving object and ultimately we are going to stop it so it's correct increase the speed of moving object that is also correct right you know that when you are playing cricket the bowler is going to send the ball towards the bas batsman or towards you or just flicking it like this you just flicking it like this flicking means you are just giving a small bit of a force into the same direction where the ball comes not like this but like this towards the direction of the ball towards the motion of the ball right towards the direction of the force you are applying just a flick upon flicking the ball the ball is going to move even faster why is that because you are applying a certain force into the same direction where the ball is coming to the same direction where the ball is moving so the speed of the ball is getting increased right speed of the ball is getting increased so my dear children this is also correct so all of these things can be effected by applying a certain force when and enough force is applied to an object it always so check the question very carefully and enough force when an enough force is applied to an object it always move to a direction which the force is applied it's always going to move to the direction which the force is going to be applied right we did several questions we did several activities as well to show that this true this is going to happen right we use several wooden blocks when we moved it to a different location and you could always see that the wooden block is going to turn and travel to the direction of the force so it moves to the direction of the force always moves to the direction of the force does not move at all is incorrect it's going to move as we are applying an enough force right okay when writing by using a pen when by when writing by using a pen now my dear children when i'm writing like this so writing like this see here we are pushing it giving out a push then when i'm going to come back when i am going to you know like see so see this these are you know pushers see ah uh, now you can see see when i am going to come back it's becoming a pull as it is coming towards me i'm the pen is now over there i'm pulling it back see so both pushers and pulls can be observed when you are writing a certain thing right pull push both can be observed right pull and push both can be observed push is the main thing that we are going to do but however when i'm going to when i'm at the end when i'm at the end of the book or at the end of the board i'm going to pull it back towards me so pushers and pulls both can be observed when you are writing certain thing on a board or on book next one when an object is hung when an object is hung using a spring balance the reading shows by using a spring balance we are going to hang an object so the reading which is going to show over there is it the mass of the object no it's not the mass of the object commercially my dear children however these spring balances are used to measure the mass 
there is a certain relationship between mass and newtons. That's a different case. Commercially, we use this weight thing to relate with the mass and to measure the mass of a certain object. That's correct. That's the commercial use, right? But however, if you hung, if you are going to hung, right? If you are going to hang a certain object by using a spring balance, mass is not the factor which is which we are going to measure over there. We are always measuring the weight acting towards the ground. That's the factor we are measuring over there, right? Weight of the object, the gravitational pull of the earth acting on the object. So always remember when you hang a certain object on a spring balance, the quantity or the measurement that we are taking is the right that's the weight of the object not the mass so let's go for the answers mass of the object incorrect so weight that is our answer number of particles also incorrect because it reflects the weight it reflects the mass not the weight right number of particles is going to reflect the mass of the or mass of an object not the weight so weight is the force which is being measured over here by using the spring balance. Weight is the force which is acting downwards. Right. So our answer is B. Right. So these are the answers for the questions, my dear children, for the first 20 questions, MCQ questions. Right. So my dear children, now it's time to move on with several other types of questions. So probably we are now going to answer several questions by writing the correct answer. So let's go for the next types of questions. So yes, you are given with the space. Now you need to write down the correct answers within the space given. So first question given, write the main effects of force. So let's remind what are the main effects of force. There are six different effects of forces. What are the, what are those things? we can move an object which is in rest. We can stop a moving object. We can change the direction of a moving object. We can change the speed of a moving object. It can be reduction or increasement. Then we can change the shape by applying forces. Finally, I told you that we can rotate an object by applying forces. So my dear children, the main six effects once again, move a certain object which is under rest, stop a moving object, change the direction of a moving object, change the speed of a moving object, change the shape of an object, rotate an object. So those are the effects of a force, right? If a certain force is acting on an object, at least one of these things can be observed. So we'll write down our answers. Number one, to move an object, to move an object in rest. move an object in rest. Number two, second one, to change, or else we will write the next one, the opposite of this thing, to stop a moving object, right, to stop a moving object. to stop a moving object. Number three, to change the direction, to change the direction of moving object.
to change the direction of moving object. Number four, to change to change the speed of moving object. to change the speed of moving object. The next one, number five, to change the shape to change the shape of an object. to change the shape of an object then finally to rotate an object to rotate an object so these are the six main effects given out by the force. The six main effects given out by the force. To move an object in rest, to stop a moving object, to change the direction of moving object, to change the speed of moving object, to change the shape of an object, to rotate an object. These are the main effects that we can take by applying a certain force on an object, my dear children. Right. Right whether given things utilize push or a pull. Now you need to write down whether these things are going to utilize a push or a pull. So the first instance given, riding a bicycle. So when you are going to ride a bicycle like this. By using the leg, you are giving out a push on the paddle, right? Giving a push on the paddle. Right? Main effect or main thing that you are going to apply on the paddle is a push. Pushing the paddle away from you. So, push. Lifting a weight from ground. So, we discuss this thing when we are discussing about the first and foremost theoretical parts. When you are lifting a certain thing from the ground, you are pulling it towards you. You are pulling it towards you. So, my dear children, it is a pull. Writing, we discuss this thing, it is obvious, right? Pull and push both. Pull and push both. Throwing a ball. Throwing. Throwing a ball. So you are giving a push so that it would travel to a different location away from you. Throwing. Push. Drawing water from a well. Drawing water from a well. Like this and this. Or else this. So, you can see that it is a pull, right? If you are taking a bucket of water towards you, that is what do you mean by drawing water from a well, right? Or else by using a rope, you are pulling the rope downward so that the bucket would come up through that pulley over there, right? It is like this. This is the pulley thing. This is the rope. This is the bucket, person, right. 
like this. So he is applying a force to this direction. So he is pulling the rope downward so that the bucket would move up. So this is a pull. This is a pull. He is pulling it down so that the bucket would move up. So these are the answers for the second question, my dear children. Riding a bicycle is a push, lifting a weight, pull, writing both push and pull, throwing a ball, push, then finally drawing water from well, a pull. Right? Okay, so let's go for the next question then. Question number three, what is called as a vector quantity? What is called as a vector quantity? quantity. So vector quantity my dear children it is real simple we discuss about the de vector quantity in detail. So vector quantity is a quantity a type of a quantity which has a magnitude and that has a direction. So quantity is that has a magnitude and a direction is called a vector quantity. You can write down the answer quantities quantities with a magnitude quantities with a magnitude and a direction quantities with a magnitude and a direction are, are called are called vector quantities So quantities with a magnitude and a direction are called vector quantities. So quantities with a magnitude and direction are the ones which are called as vector quantities. Write two examples for vector quantity. Two examples. So you know that force is force is a good example for a vector quantity. The second quantity that we studied for the vector quantity thing is that a type of a force which is referred as the weight. Weight. So weight is also a type of a force, right? However, as force is a vector quantity, weight is also a type of a vector quantity. Right. So, force and weight are the two examples for vector quantities. Question number 5. What is called as a scalar quantity? So, my dear children, scalar quantities. Scalar quantities are the quantities that has only a magnitude. There is no certain direction in it. Right. There is no certain direction in it. It has only a magnitude only. We can measure a certain value only, that is it. There is no certain direction. So, you can say that quantities quantities that has quantities that show quantities that show only only a magnitude right so quantities that show only a magnitude so 
the if the if a quantity is showing only a magnitude then this thing is referred as a scalar quantity scalar quantity next one write two examples for scalar quantity two examples mass you know that mass is reflecting a count a number of number of particles contained within an object so therefore it is a scalar quantity then time 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 is also a scalar quantity because it is reflecting just the magnitude like 3 seconds 5 seconds 12 hours and so on but it doesn't show any kind of a direction so it's also a type of a scalar quantity scalar quantities are the quantities that show only a certain magnitude but not a direction right then question number seven explain the given in short so you have to explain these things in short point of application of force so what is point of application of force my dear children that's the point which the force is applied on an object right the point which the force is applied on an object is called the point of application very simple so the point which the force is applied on an object right the point which the force is applied on an object is called the point of application of force next one magnitude of the force magnitude means the value the amount of force which is applied on a certain object value or the amount of force which is applied on a certain object that's the magnitude right that's what do you mean by the magnitude and it is and you know that it is measured from newtons right the unit of measure in magnitude is the newtons for forces so we can write down the magnitude value slash amount value slash amount of the force right value or the amount of the force which is applied which is applied on an object right value or the amount of the force which is applied on an object so point of application means the point which the force is applied on an object magnitude of the force means value or the amount of the force which is applied on an object so point of application and the magnitude right then question number eight weight is a force explain why weight is called a force so you know that weight is a force so you need to explain why the weight is called as a force first of all let us understand the concept about the weight weight is created due to the gravitational pull given on a certain object so gravitational pull is created due to the gravitational force of the earth gravitational force is acting always towards the ground so each and every object is pulled towards the ground at a certain amount of a force or value or magnitude 
so therefore that therefore each and every object so therefore each and every object is being pulled towards the earth by the gravitational force of the earth. This is the one which is referred as the weight, the gravitational pull given out by the earth. Always the gravitational pull is working towards the earth. So therefore there is a direction of action. There is a direction of action. So there is a direction of action plus as it is a pull, we can measure it from a certain value. So therefore, there is a direction as well as a magnitude. So definitely, weight is a vector quantity as it shows both a direction and a magnitude. So we will write down the definition and we will say that weight has a direction and a magnitude. That is why it is referred as a vector quantity. So we can write weight, weight is created due to due to gravitational pull. gravitational pull of the earth it has a it has a magnitude and always and always acting always acting towards the ground therefore weight is a vector quantity therefore weight is a vector quantity because It has a magnitude because it has a magnitude and direction. Right. So, this is our answer, my dear children. Once again, let us see. Weight is created, you know that weight is created due to gravitational pull of the earth. Due to gravitational pull of the earth, it is a pull which is acting towards the ground. Each and every object is pulled towards the ground by a certain force. This force is the one which is referred as the weight. So, weight is created due to gravitational pull of the earth. It has a magnitude, you know that if it is a pull, then we can measure that pull. So it has a magnitude, it has a magni, it has a magnitude and always acting towards the ground. So it is obvious that if it is a pull, then it should always act towards the ground, it always acting towards the ground. So it has a magnitude and always acting towards the ground. Therefore, weight is a vector quantity. So, therefore, we can say that weight is a vector quantity, right, vector quantity. What is the reason? Because 
it has a magnitude see it has a magnitude it has a magnitude because it is a pull and also always acting towards the ground that means it has a direction too so as it has both direction and a magnitude because weight has a both direction and a magnitude it is a vector quantity it is a vector quantity my dear children right so always remember weight is a vector quantity and it is the gravitational pull acting on a certain object right then the next question write the features of the given force question number three now we are at question number three you have to write down the features of the given force first feature how much is the magnitude magnitude is printed on here it's really simple my dear children five newton five newton is the magnitude what is the direction of the force now at here you can see there is a certain symbol which shows the north direction if it is showing n like this so above is the north so if it is north then this should be east right this is east so 5 newton the direction of force is towards east east is acting towards east if this symbol is given then that is to show the directions upward is always pointing north okay right then the next one as per to the figure by applying a force of 2 newton object is moved how much is the magnitude of the force applied right so you need to write down the magnitude of the force applied really simple here the applied magnitude is 2 newton 2 newton what is the observation of the activity observation is also quite simple by the children now earlier it was like this when i am going to turn it like this the object is going to turn towards the force right so ob observation object turns object turns towards the force object turns towards the force right object is going to turn towards the force so write the conclusion of the activity so what is the conclusion from this activity what is the final conclusion that we can take from this activity simple my dear children to the direction of the force objects are getting moved that's why it is turning because the force is being applied to that direction okay so to the direction of the force objects are getting moved objects are moved objects are moved to the direction of the force So, objects are moved to the direction of force. Always all the time to the direction which the force is applied, objects are going to move. That is our conclusion from the activity. Right then. Represent the given forces graphically on the object. So, you have to represent these forces given graphically on the object. So, 
here the symbol is given that upward is the north, upward is the north, upward that direction is the north. Number one, force of 10 Newton to east on x. And our point of application is here, you can see x. And it is given that 1 centimeter is equal to 2 Newton of a force. 1 centimeter is equal to 2 Newton of a force. So we'll use the ruler. You have to represent 10 Newton. 1 Newton, 1 centimeter is equal to 2 Newton. Means that you need to divide 10 by 2 to find out the centimeter value. So it's equal to 5 centimeters. East means that direction. If the up is north, then right hand right hand side should be the east. So take the ruler. Always remember you have to use the ruler, my dear children. Use the ruler. Place the ruler like this on point X get 5 centimeter of a line here we need to use an arrowhead like this exactly the distance should be 5 centimeters see you can see 5 centimeters very clearly okay exactly that should be 5 centimeters right then so we'll write down finally 5 newton 5 newton then the next one force of force of 20 newton to south on y force of 20 newton to south on y so if upward is north downward is south force of 20 newton here it is saying that 1 centimeter should be equal to 1 centimeter should be equal to 5 newton if 1 centimeter is equal to 5 newton to represent 20 you will be needing 4 centimeters so you have to draw on y 4 centimeters down 4 centimeters downward right 4 centimeters downward my dear children right okay so we'll place it like here now we need to measure four centimeters exactly four centimeters Four centimeters, okay. Right. Exactly four centimeters. Yes, exactly four centimeters. Now let's take the ruler away and we'll write down how much is the value. Twenty Newton is the value. Twenty Newton. The next one. Force of 50 Newton to north. Force of 50 Newton to north on Z, right? Z is the point, right? Z is the point. So 50 Newton to north, Z is the point. Z is given here. See, there are two points. Z is the point which is which you need to apply the force. So there are two points, P and Z. So Take Z to the north. North means upward. For upward 50 Newton. 
so that 1 cm represent 25. So you will be needing only 2 cm of a line. 2 cm line. So we will place it over here. Right. And we will draw out 2 cm of a line. Two centimeters, right? So we'll take a, we'll take an arrow, we'll place it over here at two centimeters exactly. We'll use the arrow. Okay. Right, exactly two centimeters. Two centimeters exactly. So finally, we'll represent how much is the value. Fifty newton. Fifty newton. One is set. Fifty newton on set right so these are the forces the graphical representation of each and every force right so this is the way of representing a force graphically my dear children right so let's move on with the next question so put tick or cross for the given statements so you know that if the answer is correct, we have to put a tick. If it is wrong, we have to put a cross. Number one, weight is a vector quantity measured from Newtons. Absolutely correct. You know that weight is a vector quantity and it is measured from Newtons because it is a force. So it's correct. Force do not have a direction. Absolutely incorrect. It's a it's a vector quantity force so it has a direction right so it's incorrect force it has a direction right therefore the statement is incorrect number three point to which force is applied is called the point of application correct point to which the force is applied is called the point of application it is correct an object cannot be rotated by applying forces. That is incorrect. We discussed this thing under the effects of forces, right? And I have told you that we can rotate a certain object by applying forces. So it's incorrect. They are saying that object cannot be rotated, but however it can. Force is called as a push or a pull, correct? That's the obvious definition for a force. It is a push or a pull, correct. Weight of an object cannot be measured from grams. It's correct. How can we measure the weight by using grams? Weight is a force. So we have to measure it from Newtons, not from grams. However, commercially, Newton spring balance is calibrated from grams in order to measure the mass not the weight. Next one. For commercial use, spring balancers are calibrated from kilograms or grams. Correct. I told you in the earlier question also. For the commercial use, they might have kilograms or grams. That's correct. Next one. By changing direction, point of application of force, Works can be done with minimum effort. With minimum effort means with less difficulty. Of course, it is correct. We discussed that by changing all three factors. What are the factors? 
point of application, direction and by change in the magnitude also we can do works with minimum effort or less uh, or with uh, less difficulty. So therefore this is correct. 1 kilogram is equivalent to 10 Newton of gravitational pull or weight. This is a good question my dear children. Now I'm going to give you a new relationship actually. This is how you convert kilograms to newtons or newtons to kilograms. This is the simple relationship that we use in our day to day life. This is how it's been calibrated from both kilograms and from newtons. I told you that sometimes like in here in commercial use spring balancers are calibrated from kilograms. So how can you calibrate it from kilo kilograms? Because my dear children always 10 Newton of a force is getting equal to 1 kilogram. You will be learning about this relationship in detail in the next year. Up to now I am just giving out the expression only. This relationship 10 Newton of a force is equal to 1 kilogram in mass. Okay. 1 kilogram in mass. So this this relationship might get hand uh, might get handy in your day to day life when you are measuring certain things by using spring balance. If you are using the spring balance to measure the mass you can convert that thing into weight by using this relationship if you want. So my dear children this thing which is given in here 1 kilogram is equivalent to 10 Newton of gravitational pull or the weight that statement is so true it's correct okay remember that thing it might get hand it might uh, get handy okay when you are working in your day to day life from planet to planet weight of an object may change from one planet to another planet weight of an object may change means that if I am having around uh, 600 Newton at planet earth if I am going to travel to a different planet my weight would be around 800, 500, 600, 300 Newton is it correct? If I am going to travel to a different planet, does the weather, does the weight is going to change? Let's see. What do you mean by weight? Weight is the factor or weight is the quantity which is created because of the gravitational force of the earth or any other planet. So, my dear children, from planet to planet, according to the size, the gravitational force is going to change. No? If the gravitational force is going to change, the gravitational pull is also going to change. So, my dear children, from planet to planet, definitely the gravitational pull is getting changed. Gravitational pull means the weight. What is the reason for change in the weight? Because the gravitational force from one planet to another planet, you know that it's a really obvious thing. No? In, you, in the moon, right, astronaut can jump like up to uh, four to five meters. What is the reason for that? Because over there, the gravitational force is very less. When, it is, when you are going to compare, compare with Earth, Earth has actually one sixth, right? Moon has only one sixth. Moon has only one sixth of the gravity as our Earth. Okay. So, if Moon has just one sixth of the gravity of the Earth, definitely the weight is also going to reduce by one sixth. Why is that? Because my dear children, from one planet to another planet, the gravity is getting changed. If the gravity is getting changed, then obviously the gravitational pull is also going to change. 
So always remember weight is a factor that depends on the gravitational pull. If the gravitational pull is going to change, definitely the weight is going to change. But what about the mass of an object? Does the mass is going to change from one planet to another planet? Of course not. Why is that? Because if I have a number of some number of particles in my body, like let's imagine that I have 100 particles in my body. Now I'm going to travel to a different planet. Is the number of particles within me is going to change? Of course not. Number of particles are never, never going to change, right? That's what I'm being made of. How can we change the number of particles? I mean, like, how can we uh, change or decrease or increase the number of particles upon traveling? It's not going to happen. So the number of particles in my body would remain a constant. Therefore, mass of my body would remain at a constant, no matter where I travel. But however, the weight of an object is going to differ according to the planet that you are going to live on. If you are living in Earth, then the gravitational pull is like this. One kilogram of your mass is giving out 10 Newton of a force towards the ground. But if you are living in a different planet, my dear children, your gravitational pull would definitely change and it would not be like this kind of a value. So therefore, your weight is going to change. For a simple example, if your mass is 60 kilograms, we'll imagine that your mass is 60 kilograms, 60 kilograms. You know that 1 kilogram is giving 10 Newton, then 60 kilogram means 600 Newton. So at Earth, at the surface of the Earth, if a person weighs about 60 kilogram, then he is showing 600 Newton, 600 Newton of a force, gravitational pull. However, if the same person is at the moon, his weight would be just 100 Newton. Because I told you that moon has just one sixth of the earth's gravity. So 600 division 6 or 600 multiplication 1 over 6, only 100 Newton. So this, uh, this question which is given in here is a wonderful question. From planet to planet, weight of an object may change. That is correct. From planet to a planet, absolutely, the weight factor is going to change because of change in the gravitational force of the planet. Right, my dear children. So, these are the answers for our questions. So, I think that you got good knowledge about the force, right? And even we discuss several extra things related with the force and weight thing also. So my dear children, we came to the end of our lesson. We discussed several questions related to the force. We discussed all the theoretical parts related to the force. So now we have came, we have come to the end of our lesson about the force. So it's time to say goodbye. I'll hope you that you will meet with me with the next lesson, pressure also.